Hi, and welcome to episode one of The Focus. My name is Oldu, and, and my name is Horias Lushansky. So today we want to use The Focus, today's episode, is for us to actually talk about the intent behind The Focus. And we will be exploring a few of the background ideas that we have, as well as some of the formats, as well as some of the principles under which we will be going ahead with running this podcast series. Now, I'm going to fall straight into this and ask Horia right off the bat, why another podcast? Thank you, Eldo. That's a really great question. Now, imagine we went to work every day looking forward to the challenges of the day. Imagine we um, are anticipating doing great things with people we enjoy working with, that we respect, and that we're really looking forward to being of great value to the various stakeholders that we serve, that we make great products, we deliver great services, that people actually deeply enjoy and that we can see they benefit the people that we serve, that our community and our society is thriving. Uh, we believe in putting together this podcast, we have an opportunity to inspire more of us to derive more enjoyment from the way we work. We are hopeful that our teams and our organizations and our communities will thrive better by learning how to navigate conflict and notice things that are worth doing better, more effectively. And that's why we're putting together the focus as a series of discussions, conversations, interviews to call things out, to describe, here's some things we noticed that aren't quite right. Here's how we could make them a little bit better. And then learn from each other, how might we create new ways of engaging with one another, new ways of approaching thorny, challenges, issues, questions, what are the things that we can do to do better together, live more in that world of really enjoying the work and delighting our customers. And we'll unpack a little bit more of that as we go along. Um, just from our experiences that we've worked with uh, several organizations and individuals, we, we went through a renewal process or renewal journeys with them. And that is where we found our Ekiga allies. Um, it is really inspirational and meaning, personally meaningful for us to be able to walk that renewal journey with organizations and individuals. And that is really why one of the other reasons for another podcast series is to actually to look for more of those um, opportunities um, for people to experience the joy, the inspiration, and the meaning, and the value that comes out of renewal. Aurea, um, going back to what we've said about this, is that can you explain a little bit about how our Ikigai falls into what we've just discussed so far? Yeah, well, first and foremost, I suppose we should uh, explain for people what Ikigai is all about. Um, we're so immersed in this way of uh, thinking and, and working that to us it seems uh, normal. So Ikigai is a concept uh, borrowed from the Japanese culture. Imagine Ikigai as a way of saying in one word, find something that the world really needs. That's, that's beneficial to the world out there, that you can be rewarded economically for as well. In other words, it's not just a hobby, that um, you actually love doing, that you can really put your heart and soul into it, and that you not only love doing, but deliberately strive to get better at. So you're getting better and better and better at it, and you're getting pretty good. So living one's ikigai means find this a really essential way of being in the world where you're of great service to those around you. You're well rewarded for it. You will love doing it. You're really passionate about it and you're getting really good at it. So that's Ikigai. So what Aldo was talking about is 
um, us at Novavi, Gareth, Aldo, and myself, and a few of our partners. Um, <clears throat> this is what we're, we're on about. We're focused on how do we improve the way in which teams work, the way in which we develop products and services? How do we help people develop better ways of thinking about product, project, and program and portfolio management in a manner that's more appreciative of the needs of adaptive, iterative, and incremental approaches, and not just um, predictive and sequential? Mm. How do we better understand a continuum uh, between one range and the other, and how do we develop a better connection between the governance or oversight communities overseeing teams and initiatives and the actual workers themselves in those teams. And I can't wait, I can't, I'm so excited to, to, to jump in there. Um, we actually, one of the things that we've noticed that is a big uh, boulder in the way of this renewal journey is this friction or conflict that exists between the new ways of working that Aurea has alluded to and this responsibility for overseeing initiatives. And it, we, we were always curious, we've really noticed that over the last number of years, um, it's intensified in quite a number of aspects about how this uh, tension manifests itself. And we've seen some really astounding behaviors and some really um, interesting um, phenomenon, <laughs> phenomenon in, in organization about how this friction plays out. Now, we realize that tensions will always exist between different perspectives. And this is where what Horia mentioned earlier is about us exploring where does the balance lie between those tensions? How do we balance the needs and wants of the different uh, perspectives and tensions in there? And this is the domain that we will be exploring with the focus. Is that balanced governance and oversight in the face of new ways of working? We notice that very few people actually talk about this space and and what we wanted to come up with is not necessarily a term that people think they understand. So we came up with a new term called adaptive oversight or AO um, from what we've, uh, if in future, if we talk about that. Now, Horia, let's talk a little bit about adaptive oversight. Why the name? Why not stick with lean governance or uh, any of the other terms or traditional governance? Right. Well, um, first and foremost, oversight. Why did we choose oversight rather than simply stick with governance? Well, um, oversight more accurately reflects this idea of seeing from above a particular initiative, be it a project or a product development activity. So seeing from above means there's a community of people that can observe what's going on in the initiative. But oversight also has a secondary meaning. We could say, not only I'm overseeing something, but whoops, we had an oversight. We forgot something. So there's great value in oversight in that it not only notices and ensures that things progress as we hope, or even better, but also we can alert people in case um, there's something untoward that uh, some uh, risk or issue is coming at us. Uh, one of the sources of inspiration uh, for us with this idea of oversight is the Marine Expeditionary Force. The US Marines have uh, flat ass rules. They are the basic rules of the Marine Expeditionary Force. And the very first flat ass rule they call guardian angel. Guardian angel essentially means there will always be a Marine um, in a position to alert everybody else. You don't know who this Marine is and where they are, but they're always on the alert. Wherever there are Marines, there will be somebody on alert to watch out. Never get caught with the pants down, so to speak. You're in a, 
in such a position that you can raise the alarm, raise the alert. You're always ready to respond and thrive under any possible condition. You're, you're never ambushed, right? You're always in that -ha -ha mentality of I'm going to catch whatever is coming at me and I'm going to thrive. I'm going to. But that's not, that's not really a new concept, Uriah. Um, we've probably learned and borrowed that idea from nature. Um, You'd think so, yeah. yeah. But, I it, uh, growing up in Africa, um, that's exactly how baboon troops um, keep, uh, keep a watch out. There's always a few baboons on the periphery of the, the, the troop that actually, um, that actually do our... Uh, do keep a lookout yeah so yeah 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 absolutely right um what we forget however is the need for for being adaptive right because we're so accustomed to keep things going um that's pretty much the tension between in the past uh think um, and i'm not saying the last five or ten years i'm thinking more the last 100 200 years right uh, if you go even further back, life was pretty much the same. I mean, imagine 100,000 years ago from one day to the next, the daily routine was pretty much the same. There wasn't uh, a significant uh, knowledge uh, revolution. We have, if we look at the historical record, a little bit of improvement here and there. And then, whoa, we start inventing things like bronze and iron and so on. But it takes a long time to change anything. So therefore, traditionally, we're very much accustomed to keep things going as they are. We're not so accustomed to changing our way of seeing the world, changing the way of engaging with the world. Now, in the last 20 years, the, the pace of change has ju just skyrocketed completely. So we can no longer afford to just have the same attitude, the same approach of, yeah, just she'll be right just continue on as we've been doing. We need to challenge our way of seeing things, challenge our way of understanding what is success, what is value, what are the principles and values by which we should operate? How should we change the way that we operate? How do we continuously tweak and challenge and improve the way that we operate? So adaptivity, we argue, is absolutely essential for thriving in such a dynamically changing world. Now, we may be wrong. Very true. But we've also, we might be wrong, and that is what we will be exploring in, in this podcast. But the other reason for adaptive is, is that we also notice that there's this phenomenon of people sell you a hammer and then you run around and everything looks like a nail. But that doesn't necessarily work. We notice that there are so many variables when it comes to contexts, that there's no two contexts that's the same. And it can even exist in the same organization. We can have different contexts in the same organization. So you need to be able to adapt this overseeing capability to a specific uh, context. Um, there is no cookie cutter recipes really that apply universally to every situation out there. And that means that when you, we talk about oversight is that you need to be able to adjust it or tweak it to the actual context um, instead of trying to have a one size fit all. Um, Horia, I don't know if you want to add a little bit more around that, but I think the adaptive um, part of adaptive oversight, um, I think we are, our intent has already now been pretty clear around that. I want to move on to um, what it is that uh, we aim to cover with the focus. So we've talked a little bit about the domain that we wanted to cover or that we're going to be putting a filter on. Um, to help uh, achieve our ikigai uh, to, uh, for having better workplaces. And we talked about the lens through which we're going to be doing that, the domain that we'll be exploring. Um, we just wanted to just give you a little bit of a taster of what do we aim to cover with the focus. Now, Horia has already mentioned a little bit about building knowledge, 
um, et cetera. But let's, let's dive into that a little bit deeper. The first thing that we want to really do is to actually look at sharing ideas. So through that is we want to collectively build knowledge and found the, find the boundaries of this domain that we're exploring of adaptive oversight. Now, Aurea, how does that work in an episode to episode context? All right. Well, first, um, we need to make clear some underlying assumptions that we make. First and foremost, we have the assumption that we don't know everything. As a matter of fact, uh, while we've done an enormous amount of research, um, the way in which we learn best is by having conversations and having dialogue. So um, some of our episodes will be very much like you see us here, having a, a back and forth of ideas, exploring, building on each other's perspectives. However, we're also looking forward to engaging with the audience. In other words, you may reach out to us. Um, we'll publish through a range of platforms. You'll be able to uh, give us comments and um, share questions and send us perhaps um, emails and so on. And we'll also be able to have Ask Me Anything um, episodes. We may open up uh, some of the episodes to be um, webinars with a larger audience where people can actually ask questions even in a live fashion. That's a possibility as well. We're also looking forward to inviting other thought leaders and practitioners in our uh, networks. Um, you may also recommend um, other people reach out to us and uh, become um, guests on our uh, on our podcast because we're really interested in learning together we believe that learning occurs better through dialogue now um, some people say oh the younger generation they have no attention span it has to be uh, just um, as long as a tiktok video and that'll be that but it turns out that that's not entirely true um, we have lots of examples of podcasts that are um, a little bit longer, maybe um, about an hour. Some of them are even longer than that. Uh, it's not unusual for, say, Joe Rogan or Jocko Willing to have three to four hour podcasts. Uh, Don Carlin has even longer podcasts, but we're not anticipating really huge um, length um, podcasts because the topics that we're going to cover are going to be very intense, very deep. So we anticipate that most of our podcast durations for now are going to be in the 60 to 90 minute uh, duration. Some interviews may be a little bit longer, depending on how exciting the conversation gets, but usually probably not much longer than about three hours or so um, at the most. Okay, so Aurea um, has made it quite clear that we want to learn with others. And one of the things that we were doing through these podcasts is um, Aurea mentioned the research that we've been doing. We've actually been actively researching this domain for the last two years. And we will actually be sharing the research through these podcasts in episodes that, um, that we've um, that, and share it and get, look at comments and test it against what really happens out there in the world. Yeah. And that is what, what this pod, podcast is, is, is we want to learn from other people's experiences and insights. One of the things that uh, Horia didn't mention is that part of the episodes, um, we will try and bring a lot of variety into these episodes, but one of the modes was, is about role-playing or storytelling. And that's quite uh, a challenge to us personally, is that uh, how do we um, how do we bring a, bring around the right types of messages through that uh, medium or through that way of um, sharing or running a, an episode? And then we're very regularly we want to reflect on our journey uh, and share our insights. And that means that the research that we that we have done over the last two years may change as a result of it. And we'll have to come back and actually uh, talk about those changes as well. 
Corey, I did speak about multi-platform or forum availability. Um, we are going to look at uh, various uh, video platforms and podcast platforms, and it will not just be uh, where you found today's episode. There will be other platforms uh, and um, videos, uh, video platforms to uh, listen to us as well. Now, I want to move on a little bit uh, for uh, from that. Um, uh, from that topic and actually just step back and share a little bit where we draw our inspiration from. Um, Aurea and I um, have both been working for many years and we've all, we've both had multiple influences into um, us working together as well as into the topic that we're exploring or the domain of adaptive oversight. And the very first one that uh, the my or a body of knowledge, for lack of a better word, that we um, do draw our inspiration from is this thing called new ways of working. And it's usually, uh, for be- lack of a better word, it's the lean and agile ways of thinking and working. And we have a very strong um, motivation and belief in the Kaizen uh, philosophy. Um, you'll see it come through in everything that we do and everything that we talk through. But Horia, um, handing over to you, why don't you share a little bit about what else inspires us that we're going to try and bring in because it's never just one thing. It's always a collection of things that, that you blend in a specific situation. Again, coming back to the context is you can't have that cookie cutter recipe. So what we've learned over the many years is that we have to blend certain uh, influences and um, backgrounds for uh, and tailor it specifically for a unique situation. That's right. Well, um, we should come clean, I suppose, and own up to the fact that all of us that are Nova- at Novavi are a little bit um, strange. We're outliers. We consume um, enormous amounts of literature. Um, these days with audiobooks, it's not unusual for us to listen to a few books every week. And as a result, week after week, month after month, year after year, we've essentially developed our way of looking at the world through the lens of filtering understanding and insights from hundreds of authors, um, thousands of books by now between us. So our way of seeing the world isn't just derived out of daily personal routine. It's also inspired by ways of seeing the world, ways of approaching the world that stretch way into the um, depths of history. So one of the sources that inspires us a lot is the Stoic school of philosophy, Stoicism. For those of you that uh, are not yet familiar with Stoicism, I can warmly recommend the Daily Stoic. Um, Have a look at that uh, that website. Have a look at the work of Ryan Holiday. He has a number of interesting uh, publications and uh, YouTube videos that uh, will, will give you a lot of insight into why Stoicism is effective, is attractive in this world that we find ourselves in. Um, Also, what matters to us a lot is leadership of great quality. And this is where we're delighted to uh, work with David Marquet and the Intent-Based Leadership um, International Organization. Um, We're also drawing uh, inspiration from Jocko Willing and his extreme Um, ownership uh, um, school of of leadership. We're also inspired by modern insights and discoveries in biology, neuroscience, um, the importance of, of breathing and mindlessness and ways of considering mindset and positivity and, um, neutrality and um, um, understanding alter egos and and dealing with them. We're also, in the context of understanding organizations, 
really deeply influenced by value stream networks and value flows and understanding the system um, thinking and the theory of constraints. All of these have profound implications as to how to go about questioning how do we uh, achieve global, not just local improvement. And um, I'm sure we're missing quite a few things that we oh, don't yes. know that we don't know. Oh, okay. yes. So <laughs> that's why we're looking forward to engaging with a broader community through the agency of this podcast. And we're looking forward to being alerted to, hey, but did you notice such and such? And we look forward to, to learning together uh, on this journey. Thank you for that, Aurea. Yeah, um, we may find bodies of knowledge that we're not aware of, and that can then be blended back into the focus. Moving on um, to one of the things that we took our time on um, in launching this is to think through the principles um, under which we want to run the focus as a podcast series. And kicking that off, is you've noticed that our intent, through our intent, um, the word exploration continuously comes to mind because we are we accept that we don't know everything about this idea or this domain that we'll be exploring um, or that we'll be yeah, exploring, again, the word. Um, but we want to live in the focus, in the spirit of exploration. We, we, we've been curious and we, we, we wonder about things and sometimes we don't find those answers and that is what we will try and explore in this focus and, and ask for the communities out there um, about things that we, that we notice and we don't have the answers. So in the spirit of exploration, um, we are really curious and wonder about deeply about these things that we will be discussing. Korea, I think you, you had your hand up there. Yeah. Um, yeah. One thing about knowledge, the more we think we know something, that may be true for ourselves. In other words, I may know something or I think I know something about myself or in myself. But as soon as we have a challenge where two or more of us have to know something together, I cannot know exactly that knowledge that affects both of us because some of that knowledge will have to do with you. And no matter how much I think I know you, I can't really know you, only you can know yourself. So therefore, none of us can ever know everything about something that affects more of us. Right, So that's a foundational principle that we start with. And if that we, means, sorry, Horia. If we are to, to learn and know something together, we must discover. I must express something. I think I see it this way. And then you go, oh, yeah, that's right. I see it similarly, but I also see this as well. Oh, that brings to mind for me that. And this way, we kind of develop our appreciation of what's actually going on. And that means that we turn up as students mm. in the podcasts. So we may be presenting or facilitating the focus or discussions in the focus. And we want to do that from a perspective of a student. Mm. One of the things that uh, also sits in the spirit of exploration is um, we realize that we're in a journey. We're, we, we're in a process. So when you explore, it's never a point-to-point -point, um, uh, action. It's always a journey. It meanders and it really explores the map, the territory, and the terrain of, of, uh, of an area. And from assuming that we don't know everything what Hori has mentioned, um, we want to make sure that uh, we understand for ourselves and also that the audience understand that we are working through a process. And it is about respecting the journey that we're on. Um, like we've said before, is, is that we may uh, find that things that we 
thought we understood before may be wrong. Um, and that is part of the journey. And we'll talk about uh, uh, it, the invitation to everybody about coming along on the journey, but it is in the spirit of exploration. And with that said is, is that we expect that we will unlearn and relearn as this journey evolves. Um, and the exploration of this domain reveals new insights. Um, and that is really where true uh, deeper knowledge and deeper skill uh, is built. So we're willing, turning up as students, to unlearn what we know. We're, willing, we're very willing to disrupt ourselves, our own way of thinking, and actually even call into question some of the experiences we've had in uh, in the workplace out there. Horia, you wanted to say something? Mm. I wanted to emphasize that this willingness is not usual. Too often, we find it hard to change our mind mm. because letting go of some of our assumptions, of some of our beliefs is really, really hard. As a matter of fact, even when we talk about beliefs and assumptions, what's the difference between an assumption and a belief? An assumption, we're more readily able to let go of, but a belief is something that we're so invested in that, oh, if we have to let go of that belief, oh, it's really, really hard. It's really, really painful. Not only that, but add into the mix then social signaling. If a few of us share in a particular assumption, and that assumption crystallizes into a belief, and a few of us believe that the right way to do X is this, then what are we going to do? We're going to insist that everybody needs to believe in the same way. Ooh, and we're going to have trouble. So some of the topics that we're going to cover in the focus may cause discomfort because we're going to start scratching some of these assumptions turn into beliefs that need challenging. We're going to disrupt some ways of thinking in service of, remember what we said when we began, we're not challenging just to be obnoxious, just to infuriate people. None of our words, none of our approaches are intended to offend anybody. However, I can guarantee right away, we will find some people that will say, oh, I'm so offended by what Aldo and Horia said on the focus, or maybe some of our guests. But the thing is, offense is something you take. Offense is not something we give. What we give is our time, our intention for a world in which we can mutually respect one another, no matter our shapes and sizes and other aspects, we're really interested in how do we go about working really well together such that we enjoy the work, enjoy connecting with one another and be of great service to one another. That's our intention. That's what Kim Scott calls radical candor when she talks about actively challenging, but in the spirit of mutual benefit. And that comes from this perspective of showing deep respect to the humanity that we all share. Mm. Um, what, to, to take that point further, it is that any criticism that um, might, might come out of this, not that we would actively go out and criticize, but rather go and explore the questions around something that's happened, it's always given in the spirit of Kaizen. It's not about putting people down. It's about building people up and improving. We want to make things better. And the only way that Horia has indicated already is that we do so through dialogue. Um, so we want to explore things without any form of extremism. We're not extremists. Um, in any way, shape or form, but we, we want to explore through dialogue and learn. Our intent is about the journey of learning that we are going through. And that means that what unites us is actually a lot more essential than any differences of perceptions or opinions or ideas that we have. It is about learning. 
And that means that here's go Horia. Two things. One, I think we should mention um, Kaizen. Again, we're so accustomed to the term, it's so familiar to us. Kaizen, uh, again, is another term borrowed from Japanese. It roughly translates as an ever transformation towards the better, a change towards the better. And Kaizen is one element on a continuum, on a spectrum from Kaizen to Kaikaku to Kakushin. Uh, Kaizen is the small incremental changes, Kaikaku is the larger methodological changes, and Kakushin is a fundamental paradigm shift. So some changes will be, whoa, we see the world in a completely new way. Kaikaku is, wow, we have a new, much more effective method, and Kaizen could be small, gradual improvements. But often we use the term Kaizen to capture all of these three ways of getting better at things. Now, the second um, aspect that um, Aldo was talking about, about uh, extremism, um, we jokingly say that um, we are intolerant of intolerance. <laughs> In other words, we are actively seeking to understand the perspectives of people that have different view from ours. Rather than seeking to curtail their voices, if their voice brings something valuable, let's hear it. If, however, that voice bring, brings something that is harmful, to humanity, then uh, the strength of our ideas ought to be obvious. In other words, we're never going to persuade people to see the world differently by denying them a right to be heard. Yes, some people have strange ideas, but we in our dialogue need to notice the strangeness the shadow, the darkness of those ideas and need to be courageous in confronting those ideas. It's insufficient to just pretend they don't exist and silence those ideas, no. So we need to be courageous in confronting other ideas and exploring why precisely they're harmful and they're not worth pursuing. Okay. So this brings us to the preamble for the call to action. Um, and we realize that there is an increase uh, polarization in the world about many things. We're not going to necessarily uh, mention any specific po political ideas, but what we notice is an increase in polarization. And the only way we can actually make things better is through meaningful engagement. And the first one, thing that meaningful engagement uh, rests on is freedom of speech. Um, it is important to us that um, we do get those different ideas, those, those weird ideas from, uh, from out there. And... Um, it is really important that we do celebrate that freedom of speech um, and live it um, by being able and willing to listen through dialogue to explore what that means. So the call to action here is to come along and co contribute in the spirit of exploration that we've discussed earlier. Come along, come help us. We, we invite you with open arms to come along and contribute. However, the way in which you contribute will make or break uh, the, the difference. So if your contributions, and this sounds like an ultimatum, and it's not really intended to come across as that, but we want to make ideas better. And we will not be very, um, let, me, let me put it this way. If you come to attack any of our guests or any of us as, uh, us as persons, we are intentionally going to ignore it. Come and discuss ideas with us. Come and actually participate in an idea meritocracy. Come and talk about the ideas. This is all, this is all called ad hominem attacks. And Horia, 
you've got a really great explanation of what ad hominem attacks are. Yeah, well, it comes from Latin. To the human, ad hominem, that's what uh, the term is. I want to discredit the idea. No, it's too hard. So therefore, I will discredit the person in some way and say, see, because this person has these characteristics, surely their ideas have no merit. Yeah, this is a, like a magic uh, trick. Yeah, And we don't want to fall for such magic tricks. We're not interested in discrediting ideas indirectly by saying, see, this person has had this failing in the past. Surely they must be a bad person. Well, no. We believe humans can be redeemed. In other words, just because 20 years ago you had this mistake, you didn't quite get something right, you used this way of seeing the world, doesn't mean that you didn't change your mind. I mean, in some cases, it's inevitable. You grow up in a certain culture, you grow up uh, with a certain way of seeing the world, of course you're going to take naturally this, that, and the other to be the case. I mean, just look at stand-up comics, for instance, 40, 50 years ago, and the, uh, the ways in which they were tackling the topics of the day. If you were to have any kind of stand-up comic today uh, say jokes like that, they would be tarred and feathered in a manner that is astonishing, right? Hey, things have changed. We have a new way of seeing the world. We have a new way of showing appreciation to one another. So therefore, there's no point attacking the person because if you attack the person, how is that person going to change? You have to attack the ideas and show them, demonstrate for them, connect with them, form rapport, understand them, and help them to be willing to let go of those ideas, those assumptions, those beliefs that they treasure so much. And yet, on balance, through our explora exploration, we show that there's a better out there. So therefore, it's okay for that idea to die. We don't have to kill each other socially. We don't have to say, oh, you said X five years ago, therefore you're an unworthy person, off with your head. We no longer want to hear from you ever again. Oh, hello, if we do that, pretty soon we're going to run out of humans. Yeah? Because all of us will have made mistakes. All of us will say strange things from time to time. We think, why did I say that? It's just a slip of the tongue. Yeah? So no, we're really interested in redemption in saving one another from the foolishness of ideas, understanding which assumptions are okay to work with for now and which assumptions are not so satisfactory anymore. So it's not about making people feel bad, it's about mm -hmm. creating hope. And, and this is what, what we're about. Remember our intent with the podcast series is to create that um, place of where work can be a great, great, place to be in and this is about what we want to do is to create it's yeah. about hope you wanted to say something yeah you? but remember um you, you said um it's not about making people feel bad see the thing is i cannot make you aldo feel bad but if i say something and you feel bad that means that there's something in your mind something in your spirit that says oh uh, this hurts Ooh, I don't know if I should think this way. Ooh, there, there's something that disturbs your, your inner peace, your inner harmony. Now, was it me that did that to you? Did I do that to you? Did I make you hurt? Did I cause you pain by saying that? Or was there something in your spirit that reacted to my expression? And if I intentionally hurt you, then confirm check was i really actively seeking to hurt you because if i was simply explaining something if i was simply exploring a topic and you share with me hey here's why this is hurting me and here's how i'm feeling this and i go oh my god i never saw it this way thank you in other words i didn't cause you harm i caused you to notice something to react in such a way that you helped me to see i didn't see something i didn't even anticipate that that could be hurtful to you so therefore by you protesting and saying hey i'm hurt were you intending to hurt yeah 
that's really powerful. It's really important because in this way, you give me an opportunity to say, you know what? Yeah, you're absolutely right. And I can confirm, no, I wasn't intending to harm. And as a matter of fact, as a matter of routine, none of us in the focus ever get into a conversation in this focus forum with an intention of harm. Remember our intention. Our intention isn't to attack a human and harm a human. Our intention is to attack ideas such that our ideas can be harmed and killed. Bad ideas need to be killed such that we can create more and better good ideas. We need to give birth to better, stronger, more effective ideas. That's the idea of the focus. And that's why you see in that little um, logo of the focus, a triquitra. It has three arms to it. It is a, an intention of, it's not my way, one arm, or Aldo's way, a second arm, but a third way. We can have a third alternative, as Stephen Covey puts it. You know, it doesn't have to be, I'm right, you're wrong. We don't live in a zero-sum world if we really consider it. We live in a thriving world, in a world of invention, of imagination. We don't live in a limited world, we live in an unlimited world of imagination. Yes, there are some physical limitations, but our imagination can help us to transform and take action and change over time such that the physical limitations, we can make them into things that help us rather than obstacles that oppress us. This is a critical aspect in Stoicism, this idea of the obstacle making us stronger, the obstacle being the way towards us getting better, as opposed to the obstacle being something that demoralizes us and makes us kind of lose faith or um, otherwise energy or engagement. Thank you, Aurea. So just to reiterate the call to action, this is please come and join us and make this better. Please come and share your ideas. Please come and talk to us and please hold us accountable. <laughs> If we missed anything or if we overstep these principles that we've discussed, please come hold us accountable to those as well. So that's the call to action. Um, we're getting close to finishing up for uh, this episode. And we want to just thank you for your time. And in the second episode, we'll be starting to share some of our research with you. And we can't wait to take that, those ideas and uh, further and get input from everybody else. I'm Aldo Roll of The Focus. And I'm Horia Slushansky. See you soon. Thank you very much. <laughs>